Flint Peoples died in a single car auto accident less than a mile from his home. Kyle Brown had an opportunity to view Clint Peoples' body shortly after his death. Brown stated that Peoples had marks on his wrist and that his hands were completely black. Brown said that, in his opinion, Clint Peoples was definitely handcuffed when he died. Based on hundreds of interviews and countless hours of research over a 14-year period, in September of 1997, Stephen Pegues completed his manuscript for his book, The Texas Mafia. On the day that he was to turn the manuscript over to his agent, he was found dead of a heart attack. Stephen was 42 years old. Dorothy Kilgallen was the only reporter that was allowed to interview Jack Ruby privately. After the interview, she told a friend that she had information that was going to blow the case wide open. She had the story of the century. Within days of the interview, Kilgallen was found dead in her apartment. She died of a drug overdose. Mrs. Earl Smith, her secretary, who may have kept her notes, died within 48 hours of Kilgallen. I had material things running out the top of my head. Jerome Ragsdale, he was Lyndon's attorney, but he also was the one that, between uh, Jerome Ragsdale, Jess Kellum, they were the liaisons to uh, uh, Lyndon Johnson. My son, after he found out that Lyndon was his father, he, um, he was real bitter. He thought I had betrayed him. And uh, he decided, since he was an attorney, he'd go and file the lawsuit for his uh, inheritance. But he didn't live long enough. After he filed his lawsuit, things became very ugly for us. When he filed his lawsuit, the Navy decided he was a deserter of the U.S. Navy. They did arrest Stephen over here in Methodist Hospital. They handcuffed him, put his hands behind him. They put Stephen in an ambulance and took him to Brooks General Hospital in San Antonio, the Army. We're talking about Navy to Army now. And that's where Lyndon Johnson's records were, medical records. They forced Stephen, they drilled two holes in his back and uh, they, they didn't give him an anesthetic or anything. They did a bone marrow test, I guess. But when I went to the hospital, there was no Stephen. Well, that's when I panicked, totally. He was gone for a time, I think it was like two months. And during this time, his lawsuit in the Dallas County Courthouse came up. We tried to postpone the, the lawsuit. We did what we could. But the judge, they wouldn't allow us to continue the lawsuit. They, uh, they stamped the lawsuit, failed to appear in court, which was, to me, it, it was too cut and dried, uh, the whole thing. After the lawsuit was uh, uh, canceled, then we found this Stephen in Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, we were able to return him home, and of course he died about nine months later. He was so sick. Stephen said while he was in Bethesda that all the doctors referred to him as Lyndon's son. I said, well, why, why have you not been killed? I said, uh, everybody else in this scenario seems to have uh, left this world. I mean, Johnson is gone, Kip Carter is gone, Mac Wallace is gone, uh, and all these other individuals have been murdered. Why are you still alive? And he said, I have these tapes. I had tape recordings of my conversations of that period with uh, Lyndon Johnson and with the other individuals. I made these to protect myself, and they know that I have them, and these are my, this is my method of protecting myself.